the unavoidable cup of tea that relieves their stomachs and comforts their spirits at every stop. People also have a rest at Hassan's camp. The evening has come, and they have to get everything ready to spend the night. Stops are usually made in places sheltered from the wind, at the foot of a hillock, or among the dunes to protect the animals also. The camels must be unloaded and fed, and all the work must be done before the night comes. Sunset in the desert is beautiful, but short-lived. This is the essential moment in Africa. The African sunset is a fleeting view of paradise. The first thing to do when you go out from Air and enter Tenere is to fix your position by finding four stars called tefala. These stars will show you the way. They have the shape of a stake, as if they were four fingers. Do you understand? Yes, yes I do. Then you must pass through the middle of them. Yes, through the middle. These stars indicate your way. And then you keep walking and walking until they are right over your head. Afterwards, Sachi comes out. Sachi comes out in the middle of Tefala, over your nose. And what about Amanar? Doesn't she come out? Isn't that that one by the moon? No, she has not come out yet. Amana comes out when Koka is over your head. Four stars form Amana. Two of them represent the legs and the other two represent the arm. She carries the sword in one arm. The sword? Yes, the sword. And now, when Amana is over your head, that is the time to camp. The time to camp? Yes, that's right. The moment to camp until the next day. All these stars that I've shown you point towards the east. The Azalai's nights are cold, and the camps are austere. They carry just one blanket and the teapot. That is all a man needs in the desert. The rest of the things will appear. You don't know from where or how, but they will appear. Whatever the weather is, the three tea ceremony is always celebrated. The first tea tastes bitter, the second tastes milder, and the third tastes sweet. <laughs> After this frugal breakfast, they must start again. The camels will be loaded and the weight duly balanced. The physical condition of each camel must be checked every day to organize the march accordingly. Maybe some animals are wounded, sick, or very tired. Perhaps they will have to walk through very stony grounds or very high dunes. If the physical conditions of the expedition are acceptable in general, then they choose straight paths, even if those are tough. If most of the animals are quite well, but some of them are somehow bad, these will be placed at the end of the caravan, and the march will go slowly. To lose an animal means a tragedy. 
It's necessary to check carefully all the circumstances and elements that could affect them in any way and act accordingly in due time with the reliability gained during centuries of experience. Before starting, they must thank God for allowing them to go on for another day. Although the Tuareks have not ever been strictly devoted to Islam, they have believed in imps, in the natural laws, and in the strength of the wind and in the sand. Allah was respected, but just on a second plane. The power of the Marabouts, the Islamic religious leaders, increased due to the process of turning land into desert and the fall of the nobles from power. Nowadays, they are the chiefs of the Tuareg community. The caravans move ahead. Hassan's is going down the last foothills of the Air Mountains, a tough ground of black sand that has been molded by the fury of volcanoes. Their facing the big dunes of sand is imminent. Ibrahim's caravan still walks along the stony plains prior to the Tenede's sandy grounds. Both caravans are already very close to one another, just at the entrance of the last wells that lead to the sand sea and the salt mines. The caravan walks with the sun, immune to discouragement, and always in the same direction, always the same steps on sand that was never stepped on before, a changing sand that becomes a dune, a slope, a storm. Men go ahead with one eye on the path and the other on the horizon. They are the guardians of the eternal time of the desert, victims of waiting in silence advancing over the ruins of their own freedom. Hassan and his father have completed the first part of the trip. They are already having a rest and eating bula, the paste of dates, cheese, and millet. The women prepared that food on the days prior to the caravan's departure. They have spent almost one week to reach the well. They will rest for a couple of days, and they will start again later on. <laughs> Ibrahim's caravan also reaches the well. They have spent a little more time, eight days. Since the moments our parents told us we were going to travel with the caravan, we've spoken of nothing else but that. We tried to imagine how it would be to walk along for one day after the other with the animals, how the nights would pass, learning how to guide us by the stars. And now, here we are, together at last. We do know it's still a long way to Bilma, but from now on we will walk close to one another. Our professor told us once that friendship consisted of giving your friend the weapon that causes wounds, as he will use it to defend us. I hope always to stand by Hassan to defend him. Hassan's father and uncle are talking about the future of the caravans. They're concerned about the competition from trucks. The agreement for survival of Tagalam is no longer respected. The trucks arrive in Bilma. They load the salt to be carried down to Niamey. We cannot compete. That is true. We are thinking about some other alternatives. We will leave the salt business, but we cannot abandon our camels. So we would have to go to the city. While both fathers chat, the boys attend Fisinak classes. 
Fisinak is the Tuareg writing. It's being forgotten, as only the eldest and the most remote nomadic people use it. We must find other options. That of breeding camels and organizing caravans to sell their flesh to Libya is not at all bad. But we must study some other alternatives. And above all, we must keep on fighting to obtain protection and support against the trucks. Our children must have the opportunity to choose. We must try to find a way to keep caravans alive, mainly for our children, whom we have so strongly fought for. The Twadeg live in a universe that is changing very quickly. A kind of reality that has nothing to do with the one lived by their parents is waiting for Hassan and Ibrahim. In that future they are supposed to build, there must be a necessary, if uncertain, place for tradition. The Tuareg's tradition is slavery, an eternal war against everyone and even against themselves. But this tradition is also a synonym for dignity, freedom, and identity against the abyss of the future. So it's time for them to find their own place in this world.